decisions. The first decision I made was getting ready to be sworn in as the president in 2001. I felt like I'd won the same election five times. <laughs> the guy calls me and says, what color rug do you want in the Oval Office? I said, oh man, this is going to be a decision-making experience. <laughs> my, my advice to you is, is that if you don't know something, ask for help. It matters as student, and it matters as president. But if, don't be afraid to admit a shortcoming. There's plenty of people who will be willing to help you. I didn't know anything about rugs, so I needed help. <laughs> so I said, Laura, you're going to have to help me design the rug. But if you're the head of an organization, it's important to know where you're going. It's important to have a vision. So I said, when somebody walks in that Oval Office, I want them to know an optimistic person comes to work every day. See, I don't see how you can leave a university, an organization, a student organization, a football team, if you're not optimistic that your leadership we yield better results. And i got to tell you, in the darkest days of my presidency, I was always optimistic. I believe strongly in what America stands for, and I believe an American can accomplish anything she sets her mind to. So if you were to come in the Oval Office, you'd have seen a rug designed by Laura that looked like the sun. It just lit up the room. Magnificent. One day, Vladimir Putin's coming to see me. He called me W, I called him Vlad. <laughs> <laughs> well, not really. <laughs> <laughs> and the sun is shining through the south windows of the Oval Office, and that rug is lit up. And the first words out of his mouth were, my God. And before he could say anything else, I said, that is a powerful rug. We have a conversion on the spot. <laughs> I put paintings on the wall, most of which were from Texas. Yeah. The reason why is uh, it was a symbol of what it's like to make decisions in life. See, you have to have a set of principles uh, that are inviolable, from which you won't compromise in order to be a leader of a complex organization or, in my judgment, in order to live a wholesome life. I, I, I've come to believe that you, well, I told this to a group of really bright students I met with earlier, that you come to accept principle and develop principle through faith, family, and where you're raised. And I tell people, I say, look at those paintings. That's just why I'm not going to change in Washington, D.C. I may change tactics, but I'm not going to change my belief system. And here are some of the things I believe. I believe freedom is universal. As a matter of fact, I believe there's an almighty and a gift of that almighty to every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth. Amen. 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 Woo! It's the cornerstone of our foreign policy in many ways, and it was controversial. Because evidently some people don't believe certain people can be free. I believe the only way to achieve peace is to encourage the spread of freedom. You know, one of the most amazing relationships during my time in Washington was with the Prime Minister of Japan, Yunichiro Koizumi. I don't know if you remember the guy or not, but he was uh, such a close friend that when I asked him uh, what he would like to do on his last trip to the United States, he said, I'd like to go to Elvis's place. <laughs> Bracelet. He's an Elvis Presley fan, obviously. It's an amazing experience to watch him sing Love Me Tender at the Rendezvous Barbecue Time. <laughs> he calls me on September the 12th after our nation had been attacked. And he said, Japan and the United States will stand shoulder to shoulder to enhance our mutual security and to spread freedom and liberty as the opposite of the ideologues who killed thousands on your soils. An amazing conversation because you see, 60 years earlier, my father, instead of going to college, went directly from high school to fight the Japanese. And 60 years, by the way, for these students, really isn't that very long, particularly if you're 64. <laughs> Just 
the moment in times of history we were enemies and then we're friends and allies working together to enhance our mutual security. Something took place. Japan adopted a Japanese-style democracy. It turns out democracy and freedom is transformative. An enemy became an ally. And I firmly believe that if the United States holds true to the universality of freedom, someday democracy will take hold in the Middle East and generations of Americans will be more at peace. spread. 
and this faith-based organization was instructing these girls, and I'm walking by 50 kids, and I'm told that most of the children's parents had died of AIDS. And for some reason, I am moved to say God is good, and in unison, without hesitation, they say all the time. Amen. It's a startling moment. Most of the time, the president talks about teenage kids, and they say something, their tongues are tied. Or they said, who's he? In this case, I said, God is good. I tried it again. I said, God is good all the time. And I got back to the White House. I called my senior people together. I said, you're not going to believe what I saw in Rwanda. I saw 50 kids who you expect to say there is no God. Or how can you possibly be positive say all the time? And when I said God is good, I said, those of us who live in the most blessed nation ever, ever, if we ever hear anybody say God is good, we ought to be saying at the top of our lungs all the all time. The time. two presidents on the wall. Right above the man, uh, fireplace there in the Oval Office was George Washington. It would have seemed a little weird if my friends had come up from Texas and I said, what a wonderful portrait of Rutherford B. Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> Just wouldn't have worked. There's another place where the president puts a presidential portrait right by the door where Putin came in. It's where the president was the most influential president, at least that's what I said, most influential president. It could be the most amazing president or the most consequential president. I said this is where the most influential president would be. I had a conflict. You see, I wouldn't be standing here without the unconditional love of my father. Life is full of risks. 